Okay, we're gonna have to go ahead and get started. Uh, not much really to talk about. I think the only <laughs> thing we're gonna talk about is the uh, updated budget. Uh, Tracy had a couple points she brought up that I thought were good ideas. I think Joni said you incorporated them. So if you wanna go ahead and- I, I actually did. The only thing I did was- Can you was use your I mic so Tracy can hear you please? Sorry. It's okay. Um, I just attached the updated budget. Okay. Um, I guess I, uh, from Tracy's comments, I didn't know if you wanted to further explain, um, detail more. From what I'm understanding, people want to, and I did actually um, print out Tracy's email. So um, maybe a very simplified breakdown of costs from last year versus this year. Uh, mm -hmm. I was, I didn't know if you had looked at the one slide notable expenses that was actually on the presentation that kind of that's that's high level though um grant expenditures personnel budget uh included the bond obligation and then the increase in health insurance that kind of highlights high level um the expenses from that we didn't see last year that we're going to or this year that we're going to see next year um did you have something more in mind or no, that's, yeah, let me look, I'm trying to look at it now. Like, I just figured, you know, we're used to looking at these presentations and we mm -hmm. have you to explain it. And a lot of people just get their information from the express, basically, sure. or the record. Um, so, yeah, so I was just thinking, just simple, here's what our health care cost was last year. Here's what is projected to be this year. Here's our salaries from last year. What is going to be this year? Just and what oh, we no, quite yeah quite. i see what you're saying um the way this slide gives that information just reflects it differently because it doesn't give last year's number it just gives you the right the increase over last year right mm -hmm. yeah yeah and that's what i think people aren't really seeing that they're not you know it's not being reported of course thoroughly and um yeah so i just thought you know if there's just some way that we could you yeah. know Here's the 22, 23, here's 23, 24. I, I think one thing that, I mean, even though we explained this, the one thing that Joni and I have talked just as we're preparing and talking through stuff, like the $2 million for remote new America schools grant, mm -hmm. we, we budgeted it as an expense, but right now you don't see the revenue in their $15 million because we can't count on $15 million. Right. Mm -hmm. But the other thing to recognize is that the $2 million is that the out year budgets are minus the 2 million. So with that, the 2 million didn't roll over in out years, right. which is a good thing. Spent. It's a right. one year. Yeah. So, and yes. then the same with the cops grant, the 165 match. So those things are not in out years. What we did not take out of out years yet is like the money that we're spending on the uh, Keystone camp. After which school academy. after school academies mm -hmm. is stuff that we're using the ESSER funds for that we have expenses. We haven't yet taken those expenses out of the out years. Well, that's a conversation we're going to have whether <laughs> if it's worthwhile for us to keep it or not. Yeah. So they're still in there. Um, but, but that's not. And I think the salary and benefits, um, Tracy, it's a little more complex than just but we can oh, yeah. do that. <laughs> but I mean, obviously with salary and benefits, we've had increases in all three collective bargaining agreements. And so the number in, um, over last year includes the contractual obligations over the previous year, plus two additional positions. What we haven't done yet is take anything away. We're hopeful that we can take some of those away, but we're not confident at this moment that we can't. Mm -hmm. Um, and we have our eye on a, f a few things, <laughs> um, but the good news is those would be things that could come out in out, like we're planning it so that we can take them out in out years and so reduce in those line items. Mm -hmm. and, and that's where you need the reductions. But, you know, it, and I f was trying to avoid trying to blame any single thing on a collective yeah. million dollar revenue. And yep. so that's why we called out all these big things in one lump because mm -hmm. I didn't want people to say, oh, well, it's facilities or it's a teacher contract or it's a program or it's a, you know, but I can, we can frame it however you guys want us to frame it. Yeah, I mean, if you can just 
figure out, you know, the few things that are, you know, a few things that are, that the public understands benefits, you know, the healthcare coverage, PEASERS is, you know, always goes up, stuff like that so that they can see, you know, our expenses, just like everybody else's household expenses are going up and we need to be able to cover that. And, and they also, I think, need to know that just like a household budget, the budget's really kind of fluid. It isn't a hard and fast type of thing. It's constantly changing, just yeah. like you said, you know, especially with salary and benefits and our positions. So, I mean, that needs to be pointed out too. Sometimes I think that Jenny and Jackie has to simplify this stuff for us to understand it, because we're not experts, but we have to go one step farther, make it even simpler for the general public to understand it sometimes. But I, I know, I, I talked to a guy yesterday about the, the increase and I told him, you know, $1.1 million is going to healthcare increase. That's more than we can raise the taxes. And, and that's, that's a great point. So and I, I, would... I just threw that one out. I didn't, I told him about we're going to hire more staff mm -hmm. because we've heard at all these safety meetings, people wanted to provide more positions. Mm -hmm. and, you know, there's another half a million dollars for additional staff we're going to have. So mm -hmm. just, that, that's what we have to really simplify so we get the paper to understand it so they can report it properly. Mm -hmm. so. Well, I spent some time with the media, <laughs> one of the media folks who does struggle to understand it and walk through it with her over the phone. Also double checked with her before she left. Don't put that in minutes. And um <laughs> There was still a misrepresentation somehow that Jeff's comments when he was against the budget. So they corrected it from their immediate release till their printed version. But uh, she she's trying to understand school business and she's trying to help. So um, maybe it would maybe instead of changing the information, because I don't want part of what I worry about is once we present something, then we change it. People say we're right. we're doing the old. You know, well, maybe what you could do is say simplify it again, or yeah, or just say, you know, that we want to maybe break it down a little bit so that some we'll take these numbers here and say these this is what it means. I mean, uh, to the average person, because uh, you know, they I think they can understand. Healthcare increases and, and that kind of stuff. I mean, it's just the way it is. I mean, but I mean, if you could take like, I don't know how you could break down the salary and benefits. Like you said, it's pretty complicated if you start, you know, looking at each of the different well, I think units and then then the argument changes. Oh, they make too much. You know, then the argument changes. I um, but we you you tell us what you want. I mean, I think the comments that I said at the meeting or what I really wanted her to pick up on. It isn't any one thing. It's the cost of everything is going up, plus these key things that we've identified. And then um, somebody asked Joni a question too, um, Tracy, about the healthcare going up. We had we knew it was gonna be high this year and it was even with the phony, Joni budgeted higher in prep budget at 10% and it came in at 11.9. And um, she was able to, to speak to that, You know, mm -hmm. the costs are higher. But I wonder if I just, if I email them information, she she and John both take it verbatim. So you think that would help if we even just kind of reviewed the same things you're saying, or would you like more comparison slides? Whichever's easier for you and you think will be clear for them to report. Because like you said, you know, we can we can do our best to simplify it and clarify and either people you know nobody's gonna be happy with everything anyway but you know just try it's all we can do i figured you'd get complaints whether it was 3.83 or 2.45 oh, yeah. like it's yeah. the same anything, argument right mm -hmm. we we're gonna get a complaint yeah it's the same argument right yeah and i think yeah, but, and I mean, perhaps like like the health care increase if we just maybe expand on this a little bit and say this is an increase in the health care that they've had for years. Nothing's changed in the health care benefits. Just our costs have gone up. And maybe, it's, I don't know, it would help if we explain how the consortium works and how we're saving money by being part of that also. Well, and I think the other 
point in there was what Joni said the other night was about people delaying things yeah, because of COVID. COVID. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the major things, one of the major factors that impacts this tremendously because I think they were just holding off. Mm -hmm. They couldn't go to the doctor. They couldn't do this kind of stuff. Now everybody's right. taking advantage of now the things, the normalcy of things. Right. And that that is a major driver. And I'm on I, this, I believe this it is. People did not do their preventative health care during COVID and now they're playing catch up and there could well, be issues that conditions worsened. Yes. And I, I think not too, detected. with the, the healthcare discussion, it would be important to note that through negotiations, employees are also, you know, chipping in more too for the healthcare costs. That's, so the, the district, you know, you're also trying to, um, you know, try to keep your costs down through that method as well. Mm -hmm. So it's not like you, you just are, are sitting there and hoping for the it. best. I mean, you're actively trying to address these things. I didn't realize they, they changed the healthcare copay. They did. They increased yeah. their copays. I think that's fair. Yeah. I mean, that's, yes. across, that's, across the teachers, we had figured it's several bargaining units, you know, $90,000 just for the teachers mm -hmm. you know, per year mm -hmm. in terms of the up, up sure. increased so, premiums to share. So I'm kind of looking at frame, how do you frame the communication and the, how do you tell the story accurately? And when you look at the current year budget, it's 83 million 366 and change. You look at next year's proposed expenses are 89 600 and change. So that's a difference of 6.3 million, 6.3 and change, you know. But yet we're only asking for a partial tax increase that offsets a million dollars because we've been able to find other ways to fund or to save. Well, and, and maybe I'm maybe I'm just being overly simple, but even from the just your your household budget yes. and the increase, I mean, people go to Walmart and look at the increased cost of everything. You know, the district is buying all of those items now. Household budget, of course, you don't have your salary payments, but um, you look at the inflation rate and what that's done to costs. You look at the cost of gasoline. And you know how much money does the district spend on gasoline, on toilet paper, on those groceries? Yeah, grocery uh, paper for our copy machines and um, computers and all that kind of stuff that a school mm -hmm. district needs to operate. All those things have increased. And well, I spoke to that in general terms, right, but that right. wasn't necessarily what they picked up on. But I think you're right. Um, gas, vehicles, electricity. I mean, that is something well, and, that and, is, it, well, yeah. imagine and, if and, we didn't already do all those building envelope right. upgrades mm -hmm. and energy savings. And then just like in a household, I mean, you're, you're looking at your budget and figuring out how you can, you know, buy what you need to buy. The mm -hmm. district's doing the same thing. And from a tax perspective, I mean, my understanding of it is you've not even raised taxes enough to keep up with the inflation rate. No, not even. <laughs> so you're doing a good job in maintaining the costs mm -hmm. and trying to keep us within a budget that we can we can do within the community so so maybe um, that is the maybe that's the i mean that's the message the message and and to say that while the costs have increased this much that it's a partial tax increase because of some additional cost saving measures that have been implemented over the last couple of years and then pull out a couple of those big hitters so i mean something as simple as the, the three truckloads of paper we used to buy that the range of paper got up <laughs> Three, three times. Yeah, so, you can give some concrete stuff like, like that. Like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, things that they that the average person understands. You know that you know a, a case of paper last what, a year ago was twenty nine dollars. Now it's fifty dollars, right. or whatever whatever the numbers are. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's that's something that well, yeah, okay. If, it, if it's doubled in price, or nearly doubled in price, or whatever the percentage is. Kind of, I mean, so, Joni, too, I think bring up a good point, you know, your cost of electricity and sewer costs and all those other things that everyone else is seeing an increase in. The school Certainly district is too. People can identify with electricity. I mean, right. mine's tripled yeah. right. at my house. Yeah, my dad would certainly identify. So just let, if I don't can pull the collective wisdom of those in the meeting, <laughs> uh, what are some of the other big heavy hitters that you think that we've been doing? I, I think we have the, the expenses increase pretty well known um you know like the peasers and everything and a lot of that information is on the slides in the small print at the top but that doesn't necessarily mean people know what that means so we can simplify i can simplify the language but i have decreased paper usage um increased co-pays energy savings 
um, from the you know the upgrades that we did. What what are some other big things that you all maybe remember or recall that you think the public would be interested in learning about or knowing that? This I think we have to like the paper thing. You don't think about it when you only use a ream of paper at home a year. Thirty four hundred kids. Yeah, how much paper? Yeah. And I think did we get go to the IU now if we're buying paper that was um, collective of some sort? We yes, but we did not. They still haven't come in lower. We actually okay. did find a company out of California. But we're searching. And oh, absolutely. Oh, we're doing consortiums. The and, IU. And that's the stuff I we mean, we're doing our bidding. It's not where we're just going out there and buying paper. We're oh going, no. I'm just I'm just fixated on the paper part. It's right. We also paper. did a. Um, audit of the warehouse to make sure we weren't over ordering anything that we were overstocked so we can and we did the same thing with our electricity and gas and absolutely also we, ran an audit and we have uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we have a fixed <laughs> for like four or five years i think one more is left, one left. We're, we're close <laughs> on which one the electric ppnl they did yeah. rob's on that yeah but yes we did do that to get yeah, a fixed things rate. like that stuff that we've done to help cut costs and reduce mm -hmm. costs or to, to keep our cost stable. Absolutely. Or even um, we have researched um, additional revenue generation by the interest by moving our money mm -hmm. around. Mm -hmm. um, I don't and know you want to call we that. are watching class sizes very closely as well. Um, we've looked at some schedule changes and some efficiencies in, in staffing and scheduling across all different um, groups, but Obviously, our largest group is where you, you tend to find the most savings because they're the largest group by far. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They need to have an understanding. I don't know how you can simplify the discussion on the fund balance because one of the points, the bullet points that you yeah. put in there was the fact that we you know, didn't want to tap into the fund balance. which Because we're making money off of it. Right. And, and <laughs> But they need to, because... The average guy is going to say, well, why didn't you just take that money out of that, that savings account you got? Well, they don't understand that you half of that is mm -hmm. already assigned. And so it's not, it's not something we can dip into. So it's not just the decreased revenues. It's also the other um, ways that we've been gener. I'm sorry, yeah, decreased expenses, but also increasing re other ways we've increased revenues to, to close the six point one million dollar gap. That's how you could close. Yep. You could I have to apologize, Elizabeth. I thought it started, but the advertiser meeting started at three o'clock. Oh, oh, no problem. I wouldn't have been. I had to deliver something anyway, so it's all good. Thank you, though. So I think maybe you could catch that. Say, you know, we don't want to. We want to maintain that because we are investing that to generate revenue. Okay. Or so that they understand. I mean, especially with the current climate, with the, the, the rates are so favorable for investing money. Right. So mm -hmm. It's going to hurt us here in the year we have to borrow money, but that is very favorable. Yeah. So, how about I try to summarize what we've said so far? Make sure I have clarity from you, and then it also catches Elizabeth up at the same time. Will that work? What we're trying to do is figure out how to better put out the slides and stuff we did the other day, so we let people understand what we're talking about a little bit better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, I I saw the additional pages. So we were talking. We were discussing that even though the information is all here, that maybe the average person reading the media wouldn't necessarily understand that, or if they did even look at the slides, may not even understand what some of the abbreviations are or <laughs> how things work. And so what they've requested is that we kind of, um, rather than changing or adding slides or changing information, that we stay consistent with the information because the information is accurate, but that I um, work with Joni to generate a communication to the media that kind of helps explain not only what are the increased costs revolving around, but that the increased costs are over $6 million higher than last year and what is contributing to the increased costs. But because we're only, and we're only asking for a partial tax increase from local sources because we've had other ways to generate revenue. We found other ways to generate revenue and we found other ways to decrease costs and find efficiencies in our, our work. And so kind of highlighting all those pieces that go into 
increase revenues, but yet decreasing expenditures in some areas, even though other areas may be up um, and just kind of telling our story of what we've been doing to come up with this balanced budget and, and why the partial tax increase is actually much better than a full increase and because of other efforts. Is that, how's that? The other parts about the things with the grants. Yeah. Um, when you make them understand because of the way she worded it in the paper, yeah. was, it sounded like we were putting in $2 million for a grant, it, it didn't give the whole picture. Of right. That. Yeah. Uh -huh. Even though I spoke to it, but she didn't. Right. Print she it didn't pick it up. And, uh -huh. But even if we don't use that, if we don't get that grant, use that two million, we're still going to need that two million to put into commit to facilities or whatever. I, I anyway. Agree. You agree, and that's what Joni and I talked about. So that you know, even though it went up by six million from the previous year's budget, there's actually the two million dollars, and then there's also the one point six five or what one hundred and sixty five thousand. Mm -hmm. Uh, match for the COPS grant. Uh, I'm pretty sure we'll get the COPS grant because we've gotten it before, but of course it's not guaranteed until you get it. So that would give you actually $2,165,000 that would be untouched or unspent uh, next year. And so then you could additionally push that out as your surplus the following year because your budget didn't use it, then you could commit it to capital you know, projects. Or you could even through the year, you didn't, wouldn't have to even wait for it because it's in under capital line item. If we didn't get the grant, which we'll know early on, you, we could still change what we spend it on. Um, and we all know sitting here that there's no shortage of projects on the 10 year plan. Well, <laughs> yeah, so really it would give you options of how do you wanna right. spend it? But, um, and that because it's for capital, that was our, our thinking. And that 2 million and that 165, Elizabeth, are not in the out year expenditures. They're only in next year's. Which page are you on? So when you see that's the what, notable, that's what notable the expenses, this but this 2 million and this 165, those are match dollars for grants. So we're just, you're needing <coughs> that expenditures is a typo. That's what I was thinking when I read this. No, it wasn't a typo. <coughs> no. What happens is in expenditures and your top top line on here in blue, mm -hmm. that those oh, dollars okay. are in well, there. That's why it's confusing. Right. It doesn't, <coughs> it, it's making, okay, that was my question. When it says grant expenditures, it looks like we're spending two million. Yes, I understand. We're paying a bill. We're paying, but mm -hmm. it, we have to it allocate, has to be. We have to allocate the $2 million in the budget in case we get that grant that was a 17 million dollar grant right, we have to have our two million matching so we have to budget that in there no absolutely i follow but it should, maybe and i'm just off the cuff here Joni. you know grant award then expenditures or grant but it's not and a, the expenditure has to be accounted for in the budget right. from us right i know but when i'm reading this it looks like we're we're spending two million dollars on a grant and that's we like have to we are we have no, to I, I, mean, account. I understand that but if, if somehow if it was worded on here grant applies maybe for, if we or, put you know what i'm saying so, we could put anticipated we knew america's full grant of 17 <coughs> million yeah, yeah two million dollar matching fund for a 15 million dollar Right, something like that. Because I'll be honest with you, yeah, yeah. Right. we talked about it verbally. It's just not on the slide, but we yeah. can we can. And that's basically what it is. We have a seventeen million dollar grant we put in for. Mm -hmm. We have to have a two million dollar matching part of it, so we have to uh, have that budgeted somewhere. So we put it in, a, in the capital. Part yeah, we can't say, oh yeah, we got but the grant. Also, now we don't have no, two million dollars to to do the rest of the project. Right? right, but it's it's also in the revenue. So I mean, it's it's not it's, in the revenue. Not in the revenue. The fifteen million not. to match is not in the revenue because we didn't get it yet. So you have to count. You have well, to plan to, to expend the money, but not count on the revenue until you get it. Which is why those out years always look so bleak. Well, then what? Maybe a, a fifth column, anticipated or potential or something revenue. So then, <clears throat> well, we've never done that before. Yeah, um, it's like we did talk about, like Jackie said, we talked about it and we verbalized it that. We're looking at that $17 million grant and we have to have the $2 million matching fund. We have to show we have it to even pro uh, proceed with the grant. Yeah. So we have so. to put that in our budget. So if something happens and the grant doesn't come through, I get then it. we actually have that $2 million in the budget and the capital line item. 
that we're going to use to start the project process. I mean, part of that grant is going to be the solar uh, fields, mm -hmm. but also the HVAC systems is going to get renewed. So we're going to have to do that one way or another in, in a few years, I'd imagine, when we're going to band aid it together that long. So we have to start putting money somewhere to start doing it if we don't get the grant. Right. No, I understand. But if there was something under in this, this spreadsheet that said proposed revenue or applied for or grant potential grant <coughs> revenue or something. Because if nope. you're putting it in a we, we spoke to it, but it wasn't in the presentation. Right. So I guess my question is, do you want this same presentation attached with modifications for next month? Yeah, I think you keep it. If we're going to do any modification, maybe do like what this talk about under the Renew America grant, put in the <clears> 17 million. Group. I'll just put in a, we'll put a parentheses up yeah. here and, and put. Um, Million dollar match match yeah, that. that's what I'm, that's what I'm saying. So oh, just put the word Thank match. You. Consistent. For matching fund or match, yeah. Just, okay. Just like you did so put the other. word match. Thank you. That's all you <laughs> want. That was simple. I wish my husband was here. He, he knows exactly what I'm yeah. saying. He can just translate. <laughs> Very computer friendly. Okay, so we got a one word change and a prepared comments for the media right that help tell the story a little more clearly see the common taxpayer i think part of your attachment for the media well, i think we do have to put in there that the, 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 um, <clears throat> the association is paying what did you say ninety thousand more for their health care so they are Pay more also. So I'll get some statistics. Yeah, that's what, that's, as just, that's, that's just the ACC. All, the, that's really all the co pays went up across the great, all of the great great great. I think there's one agreement that's not tied to the change, that's right? So yeah. it wasn't all. Right, true. All but one. Agreement is not tied right. to that. Yeah, all right. But, but others, actually, ours are, are, ours are as well. Yes. Right. Yeah, just I would put something like that so that, so that people don't think just reading the article is not thinking of <clears> giving them more for nothing. Sure. They, I, I agree with that. Absolutely. I don't know if there's a, you know, if we'd want to mention that any new hires now also um, their spousal exclusion I on their health care too. That's a big one. That's yeah, huge. That. Huge. What's that, Tracy? I... Yeah. Um, Mark, do you want to explain that one? <laughs> yeah. Uh, essentially, anyone hired after July 1st of this year, if their spouse, um, is covered under their employer, which it's only specific employers, though, uh, basically like other institutions, colleges, that kind of thing. Uh, the spouse would have to stay on their their employer's insurance and not on ours. So, it, yeah, it doesn't. It we didn't get exactly where we wanted to be with it, but it's a step in the right direction. So, yeah, um, I know at one point in time, Joni, correct me if I'm wrong. I think Benicon had given us an estimate that it could save us up to three hundred thousand dollars but that was with all employees right. and that's not it's so folks that are current employees are grandfathered in um it was where we had to go with it in order to get them to agree to it but I mean, over time i think it, it will make a, a big impact mm -hmm. that's great that was really state, a big state's been doing that for years I, we're the last ones. Yeah, well, there's a, there's a lot of districts who haven't gone there yet. It's it's been shifting across the the 500 districts, and obviously that's a process that takes almost a decade or more um, to make those shifts everywhere. But um, I think those are other good ones. And any other ideas from the group about? Yeah, when I'm reading items to a, call out as, as someone on the it doesn't matter which page you're looking at on your spread spreadsheet where. Again, it's the acronyms, the CBAs. Nobody, I mean, if you someone off the street asked me, what does that mean? Uh, collective bargaining. Collective uh, bargaining agreement. agreement. Yeah. yeah. I have that problem quite a bit. I think I asked the gentleman last night, I don't know what acronym B O Y. Beginning of the year. <laughs> so it's tough acronym. And that's one of the things that when people work with them every day, mm -hmm. you just assume the rest of it is understandable. Mm -hmm. CTE. Yeah. 
So any other questions you have, Elizabeth? Yeah, it's actually, yeah. I, I didn't write down the number. Every year when the auditors come and they give us that percentage of the, of the total to fund money the work, and capital that we have to have per year, they have that window. Is it seven to 12 percent that we have to have as a cash reserve? What is that number? I don't remember what it is. They, they answered that we answered that at the meeting. <laughs> I don't remember, but I didn't. Oh, I'm sorry. Eight percent. Eight percent. So it's dependent upon your budget, right? But, you know, and it's the non-committed. Um, is for our, this district with our budget is about eight percent. It's actually our non-committed was six million. Yes. So six million is what percentage of eighty? Something nine yes. million, right? That's the percentage that we have. So what's the and number? we're under. That eight, number. Eight, they're recommending seven percent. State recommends eight percent. Eight percent of what? That we want to say of our so budget. Okay. So eight percent of eighty-three million. Eighty-two okay. million is six point five. Six point five, okay. and that's right about where we are. I would say that was my favorite. Let's see. Yeah. Then when I read, six and a half. Well, when I read this, <laughs> I don't see that number because that number is not relevant to this slide. What's what those what those um things are, and this is the same type of stuff that's been up there for since I came to the district, um, where it says assumptions. So it's and all those things are assumptions. So it says this is a projected budget projections based on the assumptions listed. So what's in these numbers? What do these numbers represent? And so then each slide's a slightly different. The only thing that's really different is the tax increase and the revenue changes because you're only changing revenue by the different percentages or, or not at all. And it only assumes a, an increase in one year only. It doesn't assume that you're gonna do a 2% increase every year in the out years. This slide and these numbers represent ex just the <laughs> known expenses based on collective bargaining agreements, You know what revenue you have in the current year or you know the next year. Um, any things that you agreed to in employee contracts that you know you're like, we know now what fixed um, salary increases and benefit increases, how they fluctuate according mm -hmm. to contracts. Mm -hmm. So those are known expenses. So those known expenses are accounted for. Right. So, but again, as a layman looking at this, <clears throat> which is why we yeah. talk about it at the meetings and, and so forth as well, but that's what that information means. So the part that you're talking about is actually a really good point. It's just not a point that belongs on that slide to explain that that yeah, slide and those dollars, but it is a really good point. General and, fund. Yeah, you're talking yeah. about the general, fund. general fund. Fund. Uncommitted fund. Thanks, Mark. Yeah. So yeah, which out of which pool of money here is at six point five million? It's the reserves remaining, but not really. That's in reserve. It's in the reserves remaining. What we have. In that fund, that's 17 million, there's some funds that are committed to uh, the capital we have. I think there's some <clears> Peasers. Yeah. Uh, like healthcare. Healthcare. Yes, committed healthcare has I'm to be. Well, what stuff we have, we actually, as a board, you had to do a resolution to commit so many funds or so much money to that fund. Along with that, just part of it that's not committed that we can use for any general purpose without going for mm -hmm. another resolution. Remember, we just did a resolution probably six months ago. We moved some committed funds from mm -hmm. the health and wellness fund. Mm -hmm. We moved that back into uh, capital. capital. So, um, how, but we have to do a resolution. So even though if the funds are there, they could be committed for a purpose. Okay, I'll try again. <laughs> okay, so what I'm looking at, I'll just say this spreadsheet and it says, in the 2023-24 um, budget, the last row says reserves remaining 17 million 200 blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. Let me find that slide. We had a slide that broke that down. Well, that's what I'm saying. Why can't the public see that broken down? Because we, it looks we, like we have shown it in, right, in previous it, yeah. presentations. We didn't put it in this one because it, it was just. We're, we're past the, yeah. the general fund. Okay, well, it just what I'm just trying to say is someone just looking at this she's looks looking like at this. Yeah. And she's looking at this number, but Elizabeth, she's saying, why does the yes, public know what's yes. in this number? Yeah, thank you, Mark. Elizabeth, thank what, you. What's, what, I don't even know what form you're looking at, so I have a different amount. Right here. This slide. Um, it's it's the probably the budget. general fund. 
This goes on February. We show up February, March. That big $17 million number. This prompts Pendle. This is all language. I think it's incredibly important that this is, that stays in the public report. I really Let's do. I just, I, I just, people only look at things for three seconds. Boom. Eight, if you have their attention for eight, you're fortunate. I'll be honest with you, looking at this, I would never vote for a tax increase because I see $17 million sitting there. I'm sorry, that, I'm just, that's it, that's my comment. So now that you know the information, does that change for you? I would prefer that it's, it doesn't, it's not reading right to the actual person, I'm sorry. It just, it looks well, like- Even if we, we break it down, if we get it, if you show that, what or isn't committed, sure. you, you still have to have, you still have to have that money in there. For Perfect, Jeff. Okay, reserves remaining committed. Reserves remaining. That's what that slide not, said. But if you just divided, divide that I 17 million up. up yeah. Right, but that that's, what, that's what's exa exactly what you're asking for is exactly on the shot slide that Johnny showed you, which was presented publicly multiple times through this budget process. Right. And we've answered the same question because every, and I forget the number all the time. And I'll be like, what's that number? And where are we? And so we talked about it again, the committed amount and the, and the question was asked last week. I think what Elizabeth is asking is to have that information added. And that's how I was looking over here. I think we can add yeah, it back in. The numbers well. didn't change. We can right. add it back in. Right. Yeah, committed. I would add maybe. And it's put it back in this slide. Yeah, we can do that. that just, just put it back in as a separate slide. Yeah. Yeah. And Does that change? We need the capital fund 32. That <clears throat> that's fine. Yeah. Could, just, yeah. yeah, the general fund. With what, what we she's suggesting the, is just adding another line to the. I wouldn't add another line to this. Here's why. And I'm not trying to say no to what you want. I want to get the information out that you're seeking. This graphic is a picture. And this graphic picture comes out of a spreadsheet that Joni uses to when so whenever there's a change, like when her when she actively works on something, like when the healthcare came in at eleven point nine as opposed to ten percent, then she has to go in the spreadsheet, change the number, and then it spits out this graphic. And so splitting this out even more on this same slide, it would be redundant. So what we did is we took it, and it would be too small to read. So what the slide that she has is the exact information you're looking for. Could you perhaps put an asterisk by that number to say then absolutely re refer to that? Well, that's what I was going to put an asterisk right here, just an asterisk below. It's a it's a different graphic. The graphic stops, but we can add another text uh, box. To I think that's the what I'm two asterisk, what what yeah. if I'm understanding correctly here, the picture that we see has been the picture that's been used now for how, how many years? If we make a big modification, of this it might confuse people more. Some people but what you're saying is, it. is let's provide additional support to, okay, there's $17 million there. People think we have $17 million in bank. We're, we're raising taxes. Everyone I don't understand will. it. So Everybody why not put a, a little notation by that $17 million that refer to that other slide? That, well, okay, there's $17 million there, but X number of these dollars are all tied up in committed funds. And, and I think when Jack, when Joni is making her presentation, she could say that when she gets to that slide, <clears> say, say, this is a breakdown of that number in the second column on this on the next slide. This is showing you exactly what that number means and how it's how it's allocated with these different in the different areas and what you know how it's broken down and how that money and is I, there. And I think too it would be important, at least in my mind, trying to simplify it. It's it's like your rainy day fund that you have, your emergency fund that you have, your own home. You know, you don't want to touch that if you absolutely don't have to touch that. that. Right. I mean, so you have that money there that if the state doesn't pass their budget, Jackie, as you said, the last minute, last meeting, which has happened in the state or they don't pass it for six months. Right. You know, we've got to use these funds to pay our bills and continue to operate. But the general public doesn't necessarily see that. And so do, do you wonder, I, here's just my question for you, Elizabeth. The slide that Joni showed you where it says what's committed and what's not committed. Do you understand the difference between those two? Oh God, yeah. Okay, I thought so. So the uncommitted fund is, the uncommitted fund balance is really your cash reserves. So if we have to, if we have some kind of tragic emergency or we have some, we don't get our revenue from the state, we have enough to operate for a couple of months. So is there money in reserves? Yeah. 
could you take the amount of money that we're short and what we're generating from the tax increase to balance the budget for one year? Yeah, you could. But then you also lose that opportunity to generate that revenue in future years. And what we were saying earlier is, look, our budget went up by $6 million and we're only asking for a partial tax increase that generates less than a million dollars. And so, and we don't have to touch the fund balance to, to raise it by 6 million. Mm -hmm. And that's where school districts get into trouble whenever they, they don't want to do tax increases and they start tapping into their fund balance yeah. two or three years in a row. And then you get to a, down to a danger point where you, you, when you do have some kind of a catastrophic thing, then you're strapped. And don't forget, we're always we're also um, using that fund balance that was committed to make money. So we're using our money to generate revenue. And based on some of the investment options that we selected, we're looking at a potential of one point eight million dollars in additional revenue. And that's I that's think something else we have to stress that because of the way we're limited to only be able to raise the taxes up to the end, what the consumer price index would have been. Five yeah. Act so, one, it's 5.1 on so our we're adjusted. We're only allowed to raise that much. So if we spend our reserve down to nothing, we cannot raise taxes enough to, to run the school district the following year. So, you know, if you looked at that, those outlying years on that slide, and what, two years, three years, we could be down to nothing if we start spending it all. Mm -hmm. So where do we get the money then to operate? No, I, I, no I, 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 thank you so much, folks. I really do grasp all that. But my whole thing is on this one sheet, just putting an asterisk after the word remaining, reserves remaining, and underneath that, just add two lines, which could fit, two lines. One is committed capital, and one is non-uncommitted capital. And so that 17 million is broken down right here on this one sheet. You don't have to go into details to add that sheet. If someone wants to understand what committed versus non-committed is, but it still should be on this sheet because this is what people are gonna look at. They're not gonna read. And that's my comment. So I, there you have it. Okay, I've got three suggested changes for the slideshow that will update the date on the slideshow in addition to the three changes that were suggested. And I, I think that's a good suggestion, the committed versus non-committed. I've heard that from people myself, but you know, we have 17 million to spend our money, but some of it we can't spend. So yeah. that pages are not to try to give a simplified explanation of act one and the index as as to what that I mean. <laughs> I think people I don't know how you simplify it. I, mean, I, I made yeah. it. A, I mean, they did pick up on that, that we could yeah. go. I mean, I, I think that was one of the we changes did we last, did here we because we kept talking percentage before, but we never said percentage of the index. Now we talked about that the other night, percentage of the index. And it, I thought they got through on that and we read it. Well, I, I mean, if I could suggest, and again, I'm not saying that this is necessarily a great idea, but just spitballing here. Um, I mean, if we wanted to try to educate the public in terms of the the business side of the school district, I mean, could you do a, a newspaper series or something, you know, sit down with the Express and the, the, the uh, um, record and, you know, try to go through some of the basics just that they could push that information out to the public? And yeah, I don't know if you heard that part. I actually spent some time with the newer right. person to go through that. Um, she still missed a few things because it's, right, right. it's complex. Well, I'm, I'm thinking even out of context of here we are in budget season. Yeah. We have to have this done by May, by June, you know, what run a series of articles in the fall, mm -hmm. you know, to explain school budget or something, I, I, which again, I don't know well, exactly what that would I look can, like. But. I can ask. I've um, She's new doing some uh, I'll follow up with you on that, but. Yeah, um, even, yeah, I, I get what you're saying, Mark. Even if a lot of people don't know that we don't get a large amount of money from the state or federal government, even though we're mandated to, to provide mm -hmm. the education opportunities in their talents in special ed or whatever. <clears throat> they're telling us what to do, but they're not paying for it. I, I bet most people don't realize the small amount of money we get from the feds. Right. Well, I think what Mark is saying is, is something we've actually talked about 
multiple times over the years, but you articulated it the best, <laughs> is that how is the money being invested into the district? And what is the result of that investment? And that's what the article could be about. And it could look at athletics. It could look at facilities. It could look at instructional training. It, you know, all those key things that are Services investments. Provided. Yes, yeah. everything. And it can be broken down into whatever categories you folks think, you know, because then it's interesting. It makes sense. And they know the state doesn't give us a lot of money. They know the federal government does. That's just like. Well, see, I don't think it, a lot of people do, Elizabeth. I don't think most people realize the small amount the federal government provides for education. Okay, okay. So I think it's something we could highlight on. So you think that's another piece to show the, the local versus the state and federal dollars right. that go into so the revenue if, side? Yes. Oh, I, I'm Butch, I like the idea too, even uh, maybe we're going too far into the weeds here, but no. um, I think that the old unfunded mandates, uh, you know, that that is a huge, and we talk about it. I've heard it mentioned over, I don't know how many times in the last 25 years, but nobody ever really dives into what they are exactly. Um, well, somebody has actually, um, IU10 has created well, that document. For now, us. And for, yeah, but what they are also working on along with PASA and Sherry Smith at PASA is using that document from IU10 to show, um, and, and especially through the unfair funding um, lawsuit, how these unfunded funded mandates are impacting everybody, but more so smaller rural districts are being impacted at a greater rate than the, the wealthier districts. And so they're actually using that to, and they're going to start to do a whole press right, and I think thing with it. If I'm hearing yeah. the board members, they're saying members of the public, are asking those maybe not direct questions, but yeah. types of questions. And they're not gonna understand the ins and outs of all those things. There's things that we live with every day um, to where, and again, I, I think that you have to weigh your, your options in terms of at some point in time, the citizen has to accept some responsibility and engage, right. but we also as a district have to provide those opportunities of engagement. So right. if there's opportunities like that, that we could take and again, I'm not suggesting we do this right now, but you know, over the, the fall or it or, might take us a yeah. little bit of time to do something like that. Well, it might take them a little bit of time to do something like that, but it's going to pay in the long run because we might not get the, the upheaval and, and the backlash in the future if we can explain it. Or at least you, from the board member's perspective, can say, Look, we've pushed this information out to you. We're here, it was presented on such and such a date. The, the presentation is on the district's website right here it is blah 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 you know go and take a look at it and if you have any questions mm -hmm. you know contact me or contact your business manager or whatever but mm -hmm. yeah, I think it's a good idea oh i think anytime you can educate people um yeah pays off in the long run i, I just like you said though, i just don't know would it help if out of the suggestions that we're taking or that we i wrote down here have a lot of notes about the conversation if we created a talking points for the board members as well as the press release but give you a talking point so that you have the data at your fingertips when you are having those discussions or oh, I, I don't want to, i don't feel thank you if someone else wants to but i i can just imagine i said one member wrong <laughs> no, it's, it's oh i know i will have information I think the board has to know everything. Yeah, we, yeah. And we're going to be asked the questions. So we have well, that's what I'm saying. When you're asked, point, wouldn't yes. you that's want the you numbers mean. in front of you for accuracy? Yes. I would personally like to yeah. have something like that because, you know, if somebody starts complaining about uh, jobs are going up, you could be able to have some kind of response. And we've all, most down? of us have been out in the public have probably heard it by now. <laughs> great taxes. So if someone, I assume approach most of us about it. So, yeah, mm -hmm. we have all had the common information to put out there and all be on the same page. I think that would help us. So, so I'm just based on your comments, and we talked about it at the last meeting, and you wouldn't have an opportunity to share, but am I hearing you say you are in favor of the recommendation we made or, or you're not comfortable with it? I haven't made a decision yet. Okay. To be honest with you, because I, I still, um, I still would, I, I'll be honest with you right now, I don't feel comfortable. And this is my, honestly, 
is because, and this isn't pointing fingers, this isn't blaming anybody, but I don't think the district has, and I'm not saying there's time either, but I see grant money out there that and when, you know, things, every time I see we pay for art supplies or every time we pay for music things, or every time we pay for things for athletics and a simple Google and I see I'm on the, you know, two different grant feeds and I get emails all the time. And, and I don't know if, I still don't understand why we don't access the PSBA third party. And we, I thought we were gonna try it for a year. So I have a hard time with that. It's, I have nothing wrong with trying and failing multiple right. times, but we, we did, we are with the PSPA third party. We are contracted with them. That they write the grants and they, they don't write it. They yeah, help you find them. And we were clear about that when we moved in that direction and you were clear <laughs> that you thought that if we needed additional services, we were supposed to let you know for that. And so right now we did apply for the, the big one, the big the big huge one, we did get that off. And um, I know there's two additional grants that we're looking at and only one of the two required matching funds. And um, one is COPS and the other one is Justice. Mark, what's the other grant that you were working with? Stop. Stop. Mm -hmm. And so those are in the works, but what happens is by the time you get the notices, it's such a fast turnaround. Mm -hmm. um, and so, I think it is, I love your suggestion. I think that we are at the point because we, we have the plans and we have all the projects that, you know, if the district does want to look at a contracted service for that ahead of time, you know, it, I, I think it's a great suggestion. I just don't know where we've had the capacity to pay for it, but this, it, it takes money to make money, right? And it takes time. And right now we've got different people point, point on a variety of different grants and there's a lot of small grants too that come in through CTC. There's always constantly equipment grants and things that we're doing. So it's not that we're not doing anything, but we're not canvassing everything to try to fund anticipated expenditures. I think at one point we had a person we designated to be a grant writer and it's supposed to be the grant writer was to make enough money to pay the salary and it wasn't happening. So I think, you know, sometime in the future, we want to revisit that. But, the job you know. description still exists. It was actually a district liaison. So it was not a, a grant writer specifically, but within that current job description, there is grant. Um, grant parameters in there. How many years ago we did have somebody that was hired for that, but that was, maybe you remember Mark back in I. Vaguely, yeah, ago. I vaguely remember, but I don't remember any of the specifics surrounding it. I, I think that, I mean, part of the issue, just from my own personal perspective, is just capacity to be able to, to find a grant and then apply for the grant and then manage the grant. I mean, it, it, it has to be a third party. Yeah, I, oh, no, I, I, I agree. We have it in-house. I think that it, it's something that... Well, that's what we're doing now. We're spreading it out across in-house, and we do have... There is a faculty member who is very good at grant writing. And so we've been compensating um, that person individually um, with extended contract pay mm -hmm. for their assistance. And it's been very successful mm -hmm. and they've been willing to do it. So we are getting some extra help. And actually, um, you know, within contracted services, we can, you know, and, and the grant services people told us, we don't do that, but there's another group that does. Mm -hmm. And so when you say PSBA, the grant services company that we are using was PSB will tell you, hey, we, there's people that can do it. PSBA is not providing it. It's an independent contractor mm -hmm. who part, provides yes, it. I get it. I, I, I think everyone, thank you. I, uh, I mean, we did contract with that one company to write the right. stop grant or whichever. I forget now which one. Yeah, we did just get yes. the group to do that. Right. Forgot that right. one. I, I mean, I think if, if, again, the board would someday want to consider some type of a position like that and we could absolutely explore that as an option um i think we would just need to look at, at creative ways to to fund the position in, in my mind and then if that's the direction the board would want to go then evaluate how that's working after x number of months and and or years and 
Well, what about this idea? I forget which school district is. Is it Williamsport or is it Belfont? I don't remember right now. But anyways, they have an employee that actually does it, but I never looked into it. It's an actual employee, but I never looked into it to see if that employee is also doing, you know, helping with taxes stuff, or helping. Right? I just, in the article, it said the Williamsport School District or Belfont School District. I can't remember which one. I should have cut it out. Um, grant writer just got awarded this and it was just like, like wow. Um, so, you know, I just, okay, I've, I've said my piece. <laughs> well, I, I think you. it's a worthwhile conversation. Yeah, I mean, but... Yep, Kepler, she's, yep. She's, we've never partnered with her, but anybody have anything else well i had one last thing it's too much work and too short of a time but susan when she did this this is 2021 and some of these school districts did raise their taxes last year um so i didn't it's there's not enough time right now but just to keep it maybe on the radar actually we did update that slide the the last time we gave that the date was 2019 at the top because well, right, right. So that so okay. the one that you have is the most recent one that oh, is, is available. I'm so sorry. Okay. Yep. Yeah, that, that's this came actually right from PDE. Okay. Yeah, it's just like factual. Yeah. And we thought it was good the last time, so we called and got an updated version, and that it's that's Should the one that's most that recent. On here that this is the most recent. It says twenty twenty. Says twenty twenty. But, but like when I'm looking at this, I'm looking at we're looking at two years. You know what I'm saying? This is the most recent for you to access. So the public knows like we that? Said, we said that verbally. Okay, okay. But we can add it to the slide. I, I think that'd be, because most people don't listen and- I just don't want to make the slides so convoluted. There's too much on there to read. But yeah, it just- Most recently it, available information data, period. Just, and they usually put a little asterisk at the bottom and then they would just do a little- Or just explain. say it one more. Yeah. Pull that slide up. Current, this is the current- the most current Access data most cur have. currently Divided available by data. PSE, uh, PS PDE is on there, but we'll just say that the most re recent information available. I mean, you put a lot, like, it's obvious you put so much work into this, deeply appreciated. Um, no, no one has anything else. Anything, Tracy? Mm -hmm. No, I'm good. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Uh, oh, I I did one thing. Uh, Gabby and I spoke yesterday about a uh, need to have meetings in June and July, finance meetings. I really didn't think we had a need. Uh, I told her that because uh, once we vote on the budget come May, and that, or, or May 11th meeting, we'll vote on the budget. There's not much we can do at, at the board and give these folks a break till August. Yeah, I don't see unless some merge for you know, June and July. We're not going to have any new information for no. you in June or July. We used to meet quarterly, but because right. of the project, I mean, the only the only thing that could come up would be when we get the Liberty Curtain project costs. Right. So I don't even I don't even see us having a meeting in May. Also, so we have a finance or a facility meeting scheduled for May twenty third. I don't see a need for a finance in May twenty third. So, so I see. So if we bring the, um, we as we get the facility updates, will we just share those um, costs with the facility committee and let the rest of the board know that we'd be talking yeah. about those? That I mean, that would really be our only pressing thing. Yeah, I think we'll do it at facilities because it's where it's part of facilities. If it's ever the need, we can always call a special meeting. We have dates already advertised. Okay. But I don't see a, a need for as of now unless something comes up. So, and I don't even know if we're going to need really the budgeting stuff probably till further. Or Liberty Curtain. I mean, you're probably looking at August at least. So you're saying we wouldn't meet in May, June, May, or June, July. July? Okay. What do you think, Tracy? I think that sounds good. Yeah. I mean, if there's anything pressing, like you said, we can call a meeting, but once this budget's over, I think we're good. Yeah, we're good for a couple months anyways, then we'll start back <laughs> after it again. Okay. Anybody else have anything? 